Alice Stewart, I want to start with you. Let's start by taking a look at this word cloud that Trump just posted from the Daily Mail, and it shows revenge, power, and dictatorship as the most common words voters use to describe a second Trump term. Also, we should note economy is in there as well. How concerning is it, though, that Trump seems to be co-signing uh, some of these troubling ways to describe him? Uh, he's certainly not looking at that word cloud. He's looking at the cloud of his supporters that say uh, he is a, a victim, he is a martyr, and he is uh, their leader. And that's what he's focused on. And look, Pam, nothing says Merry Christmas like telling someone to rot in hell or go to hell, but Donald Trump's never been accused of being Santa Claus and certainly has no intention of changing. And what we're seeing with this rhetoric he's put out in the last few days, he is really sending a message to his base that you knew what you got when you voted for me uh, back in 2016. I have not changed. And he's really trying to encourage them to get out. Uh, the, on the other side, uh, there are many people that are frustrated with that and, and ready to turn the page and get away from this toxic, divisive type of language. That's why they're looking at other candidates like Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. So uh, he can bring it on and energize his base. But uh, the, there are other Republicans out there that are looking for someone that is uh, less chaotic and less toxic in their rhetoric and language. All right. So Ron Brownstein, you know, Trump's emphasizing revenge and dictatorship while making a legal argument that he is fully immune from any prosecution because he was president. What does all of this bode for American democracy if he does win back the White House next year? Well, he is, as Alice said, he's leaving no mystery about how he intends to govern. I mean, he is running on, a, on an agenda that is more militant, more extreme than he ran on in 2016 or ran on in 2020. You know, talking about weaponizing the Justice Department against his enemy, talking about setting up internment camps, military action against Mexico, repealing the ACA again. And of course, uh, possibly invoking the Insurrection Act to use the military to put down protests against all of this in American uh, cities. You know, the Supreme Court is in a pivotal and historic position here. I mean, they are part of the real world. They know what Donald Trump is trying to do. Even if most legal analysts believe this claim of absolute presidential immunity is specious, I mean, taken to the extreme that he is, it is I could choose someone on Fifth Avenue and not be prosecuted. The court also knows, because they are part of the world, that his strategy throughout his life, not only as a political figure, has been to use delay as a legal weapon. And they can choose to be complicit in that or not. Uh, they have it in their power to uh, ensure that voters have the information about whether a jury of his peers find him guilty of some of the serious crimes he's been accused of before the election, if he's the nominee, or not. And so I think they have a very clear choice ahead of them, and we'll see which way they go. So Kate Bettingfield, as Ron said, Trump is also insisting again that he would repeal Obamacare, even though it is a popular program that Republicans have largely given up on fighting against. So why is Trump fixating on this? Well, I think he has a preoccupation with Barack Obama, for one thing. We see this time and again. You know, he's consistently referring to the current president as Barack Obama. And I think there's probably some uh, some really ugly strategic thinking behind that. And we know he has this uh, this absolute preoccupation with Obama and everything that Obama got done. But, you know, I mean, this is a strategic error on his part. I mean, this is an incredibly popular piece of legislation. People can feel the difference that it makes in their lives. We've seen over the course of the last few elections that taking the position that you're going to repeal Obamacare is a loser. I mean, we've seen essentially every other Republican, every other elected Republican uh, walk away from this uh, as a policy. So, uh, you know, as you look at what Donald Trump is doing this week with this really, you know, heated and hateful rhetoric uh, and tripling down, quadrupling down, I've lost count uh, on repealing Obamacare. This is not a good general election strategy for him. And this is where it would be, uh, I think, smart to see some of the other Republicans running against him try to really go hard on this case that he is a terrible general election candidate. You know, I don't expect any of them to get a profile and courage award for taking on uh, you know, what he did on January 6th. But if you look at uh, what happened in Colorado last week or a week and a half ago now uh, with him, you know, potentially being removed from the ballot there, that was an opportunity for Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley to say, you know, to the Republican base, this guy can't win a general election. Uh, and so the more we see him making this kind of, uh, you know, aggressive rhetoric, talking about uh, attacking his enemies, uh, the weaker he gets. And it would be it would be a good thing to see some of the uh, folks who are running against him in the Republican primary 
uh, really go hard and make that case because they're running out of time. Yeah, but I mean, the polls, the bottom line is, is as Kristen just laid out, you look at polls like in Iowa, he's only gaining in popularity regardless of this rhetoric. And when it comes to the ACA, it's interesting. He said that also before, right? And he didn't repeal it when he was in the right. White House. Why would he be bringing it up now? But Alice, I want to talk about Governor DeSantis here. Kate brought him up. You know, look, the New York Times is reporting that his close advisor is privately saying, quote, they are now at the point in the campaign where they need to make the patient comfortable. That is a phrase, of course, evoking hospice care. Uh, DeSantis is banking, of course, on a strong showing in Iowa. I mean, that's really where he's put all of his eggs, right, in that basket. How revealing is it that his own campaign advisors are preparing for the end? Look, I, I take a lot of these uh, 11th hour uh, unnamed sources uh, comments uh, with a grain of salt. And look, so many reporters and those in the media are are drafting, they're circling the drain stories. But the DeSantis campaign is circling the wagons and they've got just three weeks left. And uh, look, it's not a good place to be. You would certainly rather have the momentum in your sales like Nikki Haley than uh, the struggles that the DeSantis campaign is going through. But I, I, I can tell you this, voters in Iowa are not concerned about news coverage of the caucuses. They're concerned with the commitment to caucus. And the question now is the ground operation and the commitment to caucus operation that DeSantis has. The people that have left, did they take that with them? Or are the people in Iowa committed to caucusing, as they have said? And that's going to be the question we'll soon find out as we get closer to January 15th. So, Ron, if, if Ron DeSantis doesn't win in Iowa, is it over for him? What do you think? Well, look, the last three Iowa winners didn't win the nomination. I mean, uh, you know, DeSantis is he chose a strategy of running at Trump primarily from the right. Uh, and, and the theory that you, if you peeled away enough of his supporters to make yourself viable, eventually the people in the middle would have no place to go but to you, the ones who are the most resistant to Trump in the first place. That really hasn't worked on either end. He hasn't peeled away a lot of the Trump supporters and he left this vacuum that Nikki Haley has filled in the center. So he is in a very difficult position. His, his runway after Iowa looks pretty bleak. You know, Nikki Haley, even if she does well in, in New Hampshire, ultimately is going to have to do better among Republicans. And that's going to require her, if she's serious, to make a stronger case against Trump than she's been willing to do so far. All right. Thanks to you all. Really appreciate it.